please have a seat. Hello and welcome to Newman United Methodist Church, a place where love works. I'm Pastor Ryan and I'm so glad to be joining you all for this time of worship and celebration together. I want you to know that you are welcomed here no matter who you are or how you come to this place. At Newman, we welcome all people. No matter who you love or how you identify, no matter your political affiliations, no matter your housing situation, faith background, age, gender, sex, we welcome everyone here at Newman. And more than just welcome, we invite you to be a part of our church family, to walk with us in the ways of Jesus Christ, the ways of peace, love, justice, mercy, and compassion. Amen? Amen. Amen. I have a couple of announcements to share with you all this morning, but first, today is a special Sunday here at Newman. We are celebrating the confirmation of Adelaide Sanborn, so we are looking forward to that later in the service. Uh, Coming up next Sunday, October 1st, that's World Communion Sunday, so we'll have a special communion service here recognizing and honoring our global connection to followers of Jesus all around the world as we participate in this global Christian holiday of unity and celebration of our global connectiveness. Uh, And Matthew is looking for ushers for the next month. Uh, So if you are interested in ushering or want to know more about that or want to learn about what it means to be an usher and greeter here at Newman, you can talk to Matthew. He's the one standing in the back right there. And you can come and chat with him after the service today. Uh, Also, this week there is no uh, Bible breakfast on Wednesday morning. Uh, Our two leaders are either out of town or under under the weather this week, so they will be canceling Bible breakfast this week. So don't show up here at 6.30 on Wednesday. You'll be the only one here. Uh, Any other announcements this morning? Oh, Connie, yes, sorry. We just talked like five minutes ago. Come on up. Good morning. Um, October 5th, I believe we're going to open the living room, which is a place for our um, unhoused neighbors to get supplies. Um, So I'm asking if you want to clean your garages out, um, bring tents, we welcome tents, sleeping bags, blankets, um, warm clothing, because it's getting cold, um, pants and shoes, not dress shoes, you know, tennis shoes and boots. So it will be um, open on Thursdays after the big outreach in the park so we'll direct them here so hopefully we can be of assistance for our unhoused neighbors thank you uh where's what uh the uh, we have a room um by the pantry and um yeah so if you need to drop stuff off you can drop it off in the office during the week uh or uh, here on sundays you can leave it uh, down front where we collect uh like the stuff for the food pantry Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. so either, either way, in the next few weeks, we're going to be collecting those things for our uh, tentatively calling it the living room, but this is the project that the community resource team has been working on to be a place uh, of uh, um, help and generosity to our neighbors who are in need, especially as the rains begin to come in. So again, uh, we look forward to receiving those donations from y'all, and we'll put a notice out in the epistle this week, too, to, with a list of what's needed and how you can go about getting those uh, to the church so that we can help as many people as possible. Okay, anything else? With that, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. Good morning. Please join me responsively in our call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to our God. Tell of God's wonderful works. The Lord offers bread from heaven to satisfy our hunger. God issues water from the solid rock to quench our thirst. Give thanks to the Lord. Let everything that draws our breath praise God. Hear now our opening prayer. God, as we gather today, we give you thanks. In a perfect world, everyone would have what they need to thrive. You, O God, created such a world, a world filled with enough for everyone, yet some among us hold on too tightly. We struggle to let go of greed, power, and ego. Free us from these struggles so that we might create a world where all people are treated fairly, where the least among us can thrive. Amen. 
I invite you to remain standing for our opening hymn this morning. It's Gather Us In. It is number 2236 in the small hymnal. The words are also up on the screen. May be seated. Our scripture from the Old Testament this morning is Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they will bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord." Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. 
Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. I invite you to join us in singing our next hymn, All Who Hunger. It is 2126, again in the small hymnal. Uh, You're welcome to stand if you'd like as we sing this together. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to invite any children we have to come forward. Come on up. Good morning. Well, today in the the scripture story that I'm about to read and the one that you're going to hear in Sunday school, Jesus is sharing a story about fairness and generosity. But in the story, things don't sound quite fair. And you're going to hear all about that in Sunday school. But I want to know, what does being fair mean to you? What does it mean to be fair? Equal. Equal? Okay. Any other suggestions? What does it mean to be fair? Any of you, what does it mean to be fair? Kind, sharing, honest, being heard, seeing both sides. That one's hard to do sometimes. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, being fair. Uh, And sometimes it, you know, you said equal, and sometimes equal is fair, but sometimes equal isn't fair because for a long time some folks haven't had as much as other people. So I'm thinking about like our food pantry. You know, here at the church every week, people line up outside on the other side of the building and they, they wait in line to get some food that uh, some of you have helped to donate. You know, we have mac and cheese down front here that we're bringing for the food pantry. And we give it to people who don't have as much as we do or have a hard time uh, being able to afford their groceries on their own. So because they don't have as much as we do and we have extra, to make things fair, we give away our extra. 
And that's kind of what we're talking about in the story today. And a word for that, it's a big adult word, it's called equity. Equity. You all know that word, right? Equity. We're not talking financial equity. We're talking about making things fair. So when you hear that word equity, you might hear it around the church sometimes. That means that we're talking about making things fair. Right. Let's say a prayer together. This is a repeat after me prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your love and for teaching us how to be fair and kind, generous and compassionate. We thank you for your love. Amen. All right, y'all are welcome to go out with Matthew and Tanya for Sunday school. Today's gospel story is from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for denarius for the day, a fair wage, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out at about nine o'clock and he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And he went out again at about noon, and again at about three o'clock, and did the same. And at about five o'clock in the evening, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. So the landowner said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came and the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call all the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired at about five o'clock came, each of them received one denarius. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last only worked one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When my little brother and I would go out trick-or-treating at Halloween, most of the houses in our neighborhood would allow us to grab a full handful of candy. How many of you allow trick-or-treaters to do that? (laughs) Now, being that I am four and a half years older than my brother, my hands were larger, which meant that by the end of the night, my bag would have significantly more candy in it than my brother's. My parents would try to remedy this by combining all of our candy into one big collection, which clearly made me upset. In my mind, I worked for the candy that I had. It was mine. I'm the one that collected it. And to add insult to injury, my parents would come and they would eat some of the candy themselves. (laughs) So what was once my well-deserved, earned, larger bag of candy, earned by my hard work, was now part of this collective shared bag of candy for the whole family. And it wasn't fair. (laughs) But now that I'm a little more mature and have a little more wisdom, I can see it perhaps from my brother's perspective. He went to all the same houses that I did. He walked all over the same neighborhood as me. He said, trick or treat with just as much or more enthusiasm than me. And yet at the end of the night, he didn't have nearly as much candy. And through no fault of his own, 
he had less. So when my parents combined the candy, it was seen as an act of righteous justice. In his mind, an unfair situation was made fair and equal. It's funny how something so good, like Halloween candy, can feel like less simply because it's shared. I think this is what Jesus is trying to address in the parable of the generous landowner. So let's start with some context. These day laborers that Jesus talked about in the story uh, during this time in the first century were among the poorest of the poor on the domestic economy ladder, similar to day laborers of today. Laborers were usually non-inheriting sons or folks who had lost their ancestral lands through conflict and or debt. Uh, They were often immigrants or refugees from other lands who drifted around looking for work. They would hear about a job opportunity somewhere and they would risk all they had for their chance to work, to get their life back on track. And looking for work often meant leaving behind their families, which meant leaving behind their support networks and their support systems. First century day laborers were often desperate. Just surviving day to day was an immense struggle. So you can imagine how eager these workers must have been when they were offered the chance to work for a day. And the landowner keeps going back again and again and again to hire more workers, offering them all the same wage. And at the end of the day, when all the workers are paid, some of them grumble and complain. This is where we really need to pay attention to the specific words used in the text. In verse 12, the workers say, These last only worked for one hour, and you made them equal to us. Note how the workers didn't complain, saying, We want more or we deserve more. They complained that they were made equal to the other workers. We deserve more not because we worked more, not because we deserve more, but because we deserve more than them. To the original hearers of this story, it would have been absurd. That's not how you run a business. The landowner could have saved money if he paid wages based on the amount of time worked. This is not how the system works. This is not how we do things here, Jesus. It's funny how something so good can suddenly feel like less simply because it's shared. And gosh, we still struggle with that, don't we? We hear similar complaints when talking about fair housing. Our denomination, the United Methodist Church, in our doctrine says that housing is a human right. Yet when that's proclaimed in public places, folks often push back saying things like, I worked hard for my home. I saved for years to afford what I have. Why should we just give away free housing? We heard similar arguments earlier this year when the Supreme Court was deciding on affirmative action. Folks complained, why is race even considered at all? Shouldn't the admissions process just be blind to race? Yet we all know too well that those sentiments don't necessarily fit the reality. We know that when someone is given the stability of housing, they are more successful in getting off drugs, finding health care, finding work, getting their lives back on track and reconnecting with their families, and they're much less likely to become homeless again. We know that college admissions have, been, have systematically favored white applicants over applicants of color, resulting in less college graduates of color. We know that affirmative action helped reverse this in many cases. It's funny how something so good can suddenly feel like less because it's shared. How many of you are familiar with the term equity? We're not talking financial equity, we're talking justice equity. For those of you who aren't, equity at its core means that everybody is provided with what they need to succeed. This is in contrast to equality, which says that everybody is treated exactly the same. Now, equity is, I'm sorry, equality is admirable and sounds great, but it doesn't quite go all the way Equality doesn't quite go all the way in fixing the harm caused by inequality. Equity seeks to address that harm directly 
and seeks to build a world where everyone has what they need, not just to survive, but to thrive and be successful. So folks, the parable of the generous landowner is a parable about equity. It's about God's abundant and undeserving grace made available without condition. God's grace is often not in line with our familiar conventions. It doesn't always add up or make sense to us. And likewise, equity is not always in line with our familiar or capitalistic or racist conventions. It doesn't always add up to us or make sense. God's grace and equity are similar in the fact that they both address inequality and marginalization, and that they often seem to subvert or totally upend the existing systems and structures that perpetuate harm in our world. Jesus is trying to shock his disciples with this parable. He wants them to react, to get emotional. That's what parables are designed to do. They use absurdity and subversive context to drive to the heart of the matter in a way that simple instruction or allegory just cannot do. At first glance, this parable might make us think, well, that doesn't sound fair, or that's no way to run a business. But if we sit with it a little bit longer and let the discomfort of the parable sink in, then maybe we can find that eternal truth within the story, that good news that we so desperately need to hear, that word of salvation, a word that feeds our souls. So if you've only been half paying attention to my sermon so far, it's time to pay full attention, to wake up, to sit up straight. So I really want you to hear this next part. And if you need to focus and close your eyes, you can do that also. But I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the laborers. Imagine being at the bottom of the economic ladder. You're not sure where you're going to sleep tonight or where your next meal is going to come from. You've traveled to an unfamiliar city hoping to find work. You've left your family and your support network behind. And here comes this landowner looking for workers, for work that you are qualified to do. But he doesn't pick you. He comes back later still and still doesn't pick you and does this again and again and you're probably becoming a little hopeless. Not only are you a day laborer, but you're a day laborer that the landowner didn't even want to hire. Then the landowner comes back at the end of the day and hires you. You only work an hour, yet you are given a full day's wage. What does it feel like to get a full day's pay when the system didn't allow you to work a full day? What might it feel like to get into college when for generations people who looked like you were denied admission? What might it feel like to be given a roof over your head when you've spent years battling a broken system that profits off of your poverty? Can you feel even just a little bit that joy? that relief, that weight lifted off of your shoulders. Maybe you feel freedom or liberation. This is what God's grace is like in our lives. It's what it does in our lives. It liberates us from our burdens. It takes a load off our shoulders. It lavishes undeserved love upon us. And the best part of all is that there is no limit to God's love and grace. It will never, ever run out. Just like the landowner, he keeps going back to the marketplace, interrupting lives to get his people. We have been come and gotten by God. So let's stop looking at one another to decide whether everything's fair or in control and safe, and let's start building a world that is not just equal, but equitable, where everyone has what they need to thrive. We have been come and gotten by God. We have been introduced to a kingdom not built on wealth or who can earn more and keep more and buy more, but a kingdom built on love where all people are liberated and set free to live lives of grand wonder and spectacular happenings. So friends, beloveds, might we all work to make it so. Amen.
I invite you to stay in body or in spirit as we sing our hymn of response, We Are Called. It is number 2172. be seated. We now come to our time of prayers of the people. If you have a prayer request that you would like to share, you can raise your hand and I'll be sure to repeat it so that we can all uh, hear who we are praying for today. So beloveds, who are we praying for? My sister is coming down with COVID. Yeah, for Kay's sister who's come down for COVID, and I'll add that we have a lot of folks uh, in our community, our families, and our congregation who are, are dealing with uh, this resurgence of COVID. So for all those uh, struggling with it right now, God, in your love, hear our, hear our prayers. And don't forget to get vaccinated. <laughs> Brenda? Yeah, prayers for safe travels for Brenda and all their family as they're, they all get together for her daughter's wedding. God in your love. Hear our, our prayers. prayers. Yes. Yeah, prayers for a son, Jesse, who's homeless and struggling. God in your love. Hear our, Hear our prayers. prayers. Yes. Others. Oh. Yeah, prayers for a neighbor who's dealing with dementia. God in your love, hear our, hear our prayers. Prayers as we adjust our thinking to realize that we live in an abundant universe. There is enough. We are enough. Yeah, prayers to adjust our thinking that we live in an abundant universe, and there is enough. So God in your love, hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. Um, Nikki. That's a prayer of thanksgiving from Mickey, and a thankful to all of you for praying as she's been searching for a job. She has a job now and has started, so God in your love, hear our, our prayers. prayers. 
Jean, did you have one? Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, Nelson and Jean Mount are celebrating 53 years of marriage together. So God and your love, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. <laughs> yes. Anyone else? Yeah, a prayer of thankfulness for all the rain we're hopefully going to get. So God and your love, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Will you all join me in an attitude of prayer? God, hear our prayers, the ones that we've spoken aloud today and the ones that we carry within our hearts. Hear these prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly sh share the concerns of our neighbors. God, we come before you offering our hurts and our pains, our joys and our celebrations. You are present with us through it all walking amongst us when we are hurt, and dancing with us when we are overjoyed. Work within us a spirit of empathy and compassion so that we might walk alongside others as a reflection of your love. We pray this and so much more, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When you give to Newman, you are supporting the work of our vital ministries that impact lives here in Josephine County and around the world. 90% of every dollar you give supports local ministry here in our county. You are invited to make a financial gift to Newman when the offering basket comes around. You may also give online by going to our website and clicking on the Give tab or by using the Church Connect app. Thank you for all you do to generously support the ministries of our church.
I invite you to stand in the body or in spirit for our doxology. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts that have been so generously given. We ask that you pour out your blessing upon them that they may be used to bring fairness and equity to build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Siblings in Christ, it is through the sacrament of baptism that we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's good gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. Acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. With that, I invite Addie to come forward with her sponsors, Pat and Anne. And if you stand right up here and you can face the congregation. And feel free to stand in close, that way you're all our... Okay. (laughs) I'm being impatient, aren't I? As lay leader of this congregation of the United Methodist Church, I present Adelaide Sanborn for confirmation. Addie is the child of Corey Sanborn and Tanya Harbolt. Addie, on behalf of the whole church and this congregation, I ask you, Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which is opened to all people of all ages, nations, and races? Sponsors, Pat and Anne, will you nurture Addie in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself and profess her faith openly and lead a Christian life? If so, say we will. Addie, according to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? I will. Will you who sponsor Addie Support her and encourage her in Christian life. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Addie in your care? Your response is up on the screen. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Addie with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the Holy Scriptures. Your responses will be up on the screen. Do you believe in God Almighty? I believe in God Almighty, creator of the universe. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God, the incarnate and fleshed presence of God on earth, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, and is one with the Creator and one with us. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of all life everlasting with God. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Addie, remember your baptism and be thankful. And remember your baptism and be thankful. Pat, remember your baptism and be thankful. And to all of you, I'm going to try to do this and not get the camera wet. <laughs> Quick, Julie, you're going to get soaked. <laughs> <laughs> to all of you, remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. <clears throat> as members of, as a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? I will. As a member of this congregation, Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Now it's your turn to do something. I'm going to invite the congregation to come forward, Addie, if you want to stand here in the center facing the, the baptismal font. And I invite you to come forward. You can lay a hand on Addie's shoulder or on the shoulder of someone in front of you as we uh, pray and bless Addie's confirmation together. And if you don't want to come forward, you could just reach out a hand and blessing from wherever you are sitting. That is totally fine. Members of the household of God, I commend to you Adelaide Sanborn, to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. You join me in saying the prayer up on the screen. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation, the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you that you may live in grace and peace now and forever. Amen. 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 Congratulations, Addie, and welcome. <laughs> you may all be seated. And we invite you to join us after worship over in Wesley Hall as we celebrate this occasion with some cake. I should have said this before you all sat down, but we're going to stand and sing. So, <laughs> I invite you to join me in singing our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, is number 557. We are singing verses 1, 3, and 4.
Beloveds, receive this blessing. May you go forth from this place with God's love in your hearts. Love overflowing, generosity overflowing so much that it just flows out to wherever you go. That people look at you and say, there goes a child of God. May God's love be with you. May God's fairness and generosity be with you now and forever. Go in peace. Amen. I want you to raise out your hands and signs of blessing and love to one another as we sing together our sung benediction. For the word of God, go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.